Well, I, I, so want to, I want to take you up on that, <laughs> uh, you know, because that hug, that embrace, yes. that uh, accord, as it were, that took place in Abuja. In Abuja, yes. Yes. What did you make of the peace accord that was signed? Do you really think that that holds water, and do you think that it is capable of dousing tensions that could, you know, result in violence? Yeah, well, well it's not a legal document, so mm -hmm. we cannot say whether it will be to abide by it or not, but at least it's a gesture. It's a public gesture that gives assurance to the various uh, partisans and fanatics that even their principals are capable of shaking hands and that, so that they see it as a game. It is as hot as that anywhere, whether it's in America or in Japan or in Germany or in England, when politicians, they are gladiators because particularly in our system, where the winner takes all. These are structural defects of the political system. The, pers the party that wins, even if only 1%, is the one that has all the ministers, all the commissioners. This makes it more okay. difficult to control. But I, mean, I think the gesture that the two male rivals exhibited in that uh, workshop in, uh, in Abuja has helped to moderate people's attitude. People see pictures, people see images. Many of the people who are going to vote don't even speak English. If what we are communicating here now is only 25% of Nigerians who can hear us, there are 75% of the voters who don't speak this language. But they see gestures, they see photographs, they see images, and those images convey a lot of meaning to them. I have a question about the process and the system. Yes. Because you spoke about it. Uh, Gwanda Turner says, he thinks that people have lost hope in this process because in Edo State, for instance, he says there are over 900,000 PVCs available, but not collected, according to the new uh, resident electoral commissioner. For him, that's a sign of people losing interest. Well, let, let uh, INEC demonstrate that it has done its best to make the collection easy for people. Take the Lagos example, for example. One of the problems they had was the difficulty of getting the, the card. Last week, they announced that they had multiplied the centers per local government, 10, 11. I heard it on radio. Uh, I think Repower Radio, where they were announcing new areas where the collection has improved. Abuja has only 42% collection. That is the, where INEC is. There's no reason why it should be so. But I saw on television that more people are collecting now. So INEC has vote, has money to inform the people on how to, and make it, don't, you don't have to close your work for one week to collect a vote. Yeah, in, in Lagos, we yes. were told, the yeah. new uh, rec there did say that, well, uh, part of the reasons why some of this is delayed, he says, look, funds were not released on time, and secondly, they are now working seven days Good. to ensure that people come forward and collect Good. this. Good, yeah. They should do it such that by, by February 14, at least we have 98% of the votes of the cars collected. Then we know that they have carried out their duty. That is the duty assigned to them. It's not yours, it's not mine. Are you but the, the Edo State that you mentioned, it may not be voter uh, uh, apathy. It may just be the structure of the distribution. You know, it's so but chaotic they, that people don't want to lose their jobs or they, will not, they want to, to abandon work just because they want to collect the card. Before every uh, I major... I think the guy that do now was the one in Cross River, so yeah. he has capacity to improve. Before every election. major election, I mean, every four years, we've always had this build-up to elections. I think the which year was it? Was it 2003 when there was a truck that rammed into INEC office? And at that time, there were talk, former President Obasanjo was in at that time. There was talk about whether or not elections were going to be postponed. Now, we've seen another boisterous build up to elections. How do you see elections playing out eventually? You know, I, 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 I don't have any fears. I'm saying that from, as a journalist, as a media person, I know that during election time, the temperature, the temper of the country changes. It's not going to be so in March or in April. Uh, as if we have war before the yeah, elections. Yeah, because it is war. It is war of power. <laughs> and in a country where oil is the one that lubricates everybody's fortune, the person who controls that power 
has power of life and death over us. So the struggle is intense. And they are not struggling, if you see the problem, they are not struggling over who is going to be, be if more industries or more highways, where the argument goes in the direction of ideas and so on, it's not as so. But here, with over 50 television stations monitoring you, people like to, to dramatize. So I'm not surprised. Election we hold, if we have even an 80% performance, that's an improvement. The, the, the population, I'm sure, even in their disappointment, knows that the present government that we have is better than what we had 20, 30 years ago in terms of freedom of expression as a journalist, the condition created by uh, President Jonathan's regime is far, far, a thousand times better than what was in 1984 when Buhari was in power. I was, I was uh, an ASU activist at that time. We were detained without trial in underground cells. Those conditions have vanished. Under this democratic dispensation, we know that we are enjoying freedom that we didn't enjoy before. Uh, people are investing in it in their future. Many areas of, their, of our lives, fees, transport, housing, we still have difficulties. And we are charging the parties that they must do better than they did before. And I, I don't want one party to be blamed because the different parties are governing different states in Nigeria. The federal government is responsible for 30 states. PDP is simply for 30 states. Right, we should judge them according to what they are doing there. Well, I can come on. to Lagos and, I, and blame PDP for Lagos because PDP is not in charge of Lagos. Those are the other matters. But I can also around. argue that because PDP is in power, industrial policy have favored Lagos, have favored the good state right, because Prof. they are close to the coast. Prof, you can go, so, if, if we let you, you will go on and on. We are a campaigner. I'm, a, I'm afraid we're <laughs> out of time on this yes. one. Professor Godini Dara is a former chairman of the editorial board of the Guardian newspapers. He was a delegate at the National Conference now teaching. We didn't even talk that now. In uh, Delta State That's University. another day. Another day, Prof. Yeah. We'll be back in just a moment. Please join us again. <laughs>